Well, for this example, it's back to you substitution yet again. <laughs> but we love this so much. Wouldn't we love to add in definite integrals and make it for values as well? Sure, why not? All right, so if I let u be what's underneath that square root, so 1 plus the square root of x. In other words, u is 1 plus x to the 1 half. Hmm. All right, well then du would be equal to, sorry, I my for my pen. du would be 1 half x to the negative 1 half dx. Hmm. Now I know what you're thinking, like this doesn't seem to be helping because this has all sorts of stuff that I don't really want in here. Well, it'll, it'll be all right. This is going to be a very tricky u substitution. Okay, so let's think about this. If u is 1 plus the square root of x, then u minus 1 would be equal to the square root of x, correct? Right? So that means that I have the square root of x down here. I can say that that's 1 over, this is du, keep in mind, 1 over 2 u minus 1. So that means that dx would be equal to 2 times u minus 1 times du. This is an extra tricky, extra, extra tricky u sub. All right. So let's rewrite our integral using everything we know so far. We'll leave the numbers off for just a second. Okay, so underneath that, it's the square root of u. I mean, super straightforward, no problem at all, square root of u. The problem is dx, right? So the problem is that, or put it another way, the problem that with the square root of u is that du would involve this one half x to the negative one half business, which we don't want. So we basically finagled around with the x to the negative a half using some type of u minus one. So that way we could get it all in terms of u. So that dx that we see right here will turn into two times u minus one times du. There's the dx and over here is the square root of u. Amazing, isn't it? So very, very tricky U substitution. Not the kind that we, you know, start off right out of the gate with in Calc 1. Okay, so before I go any further, because I can see that I'm going to be doing 2 integral U to the 1 half times U minus 1 DU. Like I can feel that coming and then I'm going to distribute. But before I deal with that, I need new numbers. So the numbers that I had were all well and good, but they were for X because this integral symbol goes with that differential. So that these are automatically x equals 9 and x equals 16. So I need to come up with new numbers for my u. So if x was 9, u is 1 plus the square root of 9, which is 1 plus 3, which is 4. So my bottom number on my integral is now going to be 4. The top number on my integral, when x was 16, u is 1 plus the square root of 16, which is 1 plus 4, which is 5. So I'm going to go from 4 to 5. And those are now the numbers for my integral, and I will never go back. No back substitution. I will stick with the u values. Clever, huh? It's actually more work to go back to u. Okay, so this is 2 times the integral from 4 to 5. Of, and then I'm going to distribute using my, my lovely algebra techniques. This is u to the 3 halves minus u to the 1 half du, which I know how to integrate. That's 2, 2 fifths u to the 5 halves minus 2 thirds u to the 3 halves from 4 to 5. Wonderful. All right, now I notice there's a lot of things going on in here. So, well, I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it like that. So it's just going to be ugly when I do this. So, so if I have two, then it's going to be 
two fifths and then to the five halves, five to the five halves minus two thirds, five to the three halves. So five's gonna go in here. So there's the five bits right there. Minus, I'm gonna do it again, <laughs> two fifths and then four to the five halves minus two thirds and then four to the three halves. Oh, and then this will be my pink bit. So this is gonna be four here and this is gonna be four here. Okay, well the fours actually work out because the square root of four, because having that two in that denominator up there for that power makes it so that these are all gonna work out lovely. Matter of fact, I can find them with Dasmos if I wanted to. I could also just do them in my head. This is the square root of four is two, two to the fifth is 32, 32 times two is 64. So that's 64 over five minus, and then square root of four is two, two, two to the third is eight, eight times two is 16. So 16 thirds, right? And I could of course use decimals to combine those fractions or again, I could write it out. There, I typed it into decimals and I get 112 over 15 for that back number. All right, so let's go put that in. So this part right here becomes 112 over 15. Okay, now the front number is gonna be a little bit harder to come up with. So I gotta play with this a little bit. So let's see here. The square root of five to the fifth power. In other words, we're taking five to the fifth power and then we're taking the square root of it. So five to the fifth power This is not gonna work out so nicely, so I just wanna kinda of see this. So five to the fifth power is 3,125. 3,125 is divisible by 25. Oh, it's divisible by more than that. There, it's divisible by 25 squared. Good to know, okay. So that's that one, and I might as well do the same thing with five to the third. Five to the third is 125. 125 divided by 25 is three, or excuse me, is five. There we go. So let's use that back over here. Oops, I forgot to press record. So it's the square root of 3,125 minus two thirds the square root of 125. But again, remember that this one is divisible by 25 squared, i.e. 625. So I can take the square root of this and I can write it out as this is 625 times five and this is 25 times five. So, so the square root of 625 is 25 and 25 times two is 50. So this is two times 50, right? Because the square root of 625 is 25. 25 times 2 is 50 over 5, square root of 5. Square root of 25 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. So minus 10 thirds square root of 5. Oh, hey, they're like terms. Isn't that nice? Convenient. Okay, so... Um, 10, well, this is 10, because 50 divided by 5 is 10. So I just need 10 take away 10 thirds. So that's 30 thirds take away 10 thirds, which would be 20 thirds. So this is 2 times, and then 20 thirds square root of 5 minus 112 over 15. I could factor uh, 1 over 15 out of this. I could actually factor um, even more than that. Hell, I could factor a 4 out of both of these, I bet. So make this eight in front. So let's factor. Actually, before I even do that, I'm not particularly fond of the fractions. So I'm gonna change this one. I'm gonna multiply this one by five over five. And I'm doing that so that way they'll have the same denominator. Not because I can combine them, but then because I can factor it out. So I can factor out, there's a two already. I can factor out a 15. And then I just need a number, the biggest number I can think of that goes into 100 and 112. Well, four definitely goes in. But let me see if there's anything larger with decimals. Nope. The greatest common factor, GCF, of 100 and 112 is four. All right, so I'll factor a four out. So this is two times four, and that'll leave me 25 square root of five minus, and then four goes into 112, 25 plus three more times, so 28, like that. 
So this would be 8 over 15, 25 square root of 5 minus 28. And not that you had to go that far. I mean, technically, this answer is correct. I just didn't like all the fractions and stuff in there. So I thought I could factor out a 15 in the denominator and I could factor out a 4 in the numerator and I did.